This anime begins as we watch someone barely managing to stay on a tightrope. Students gossip about how he just got into another fight and how he is nothing but trouble, even the parents discuss how dangerous he is. Everyone thinks that he's too dangerous to even look at, but it's to be expected since everyone knows that he doesn't know how to interact with people. They insult his appearance, citing how he refuses to dye his hair black. Even the color of one of his eyes is wrong, and they use that to say that he must be cursed. Everyone thinks he's disgusting and the kid eventually falls off the rope. We then see our angry protagonist for the first time named Haruka Sakura. He explains that he likes the strong and couldn't care less about the weak. Nearby some guys harass a girl and wonder if she wants to go do something. She would like to bash some eggs over their heads, but that would just be a waste of good eggs. The guy warns her not to act so stuck up and he keeps her from leaving. Haruka then explains that what he hates the most are weak people who think they are strong. Haruka interferes with the gang of harassers and tells them that it's too early to be acting so lame. The leader tries to attack Haruka, but unfortunately he is one of the types that Haruka hates the most. Haruka easily drops this guy and wonders what could possibly be going on in his head that makes him think that he is strong when he is not. Haruka demands that they drill his name and face into their brains so that they can tell all the weak people they know to run away from him when they see him. Haruka or some kind of psychopath as he also wants them to know his name so that they can tell all the strong people how to find him. He declares that he is Haruka Sakura from Furin High School. Haruka leaves these jerks but the girl stopped him to say thank you. Haruka is confused and wonders if she is talking to him. She confirms that she was, and Haruka makes it very clear that he actually didn't do that to save her. He only beat those guys up because they annoyed him. Haruka declined her offer to eat something, but she ends up feeding him anyway. She can tell that he isn't from this town, and it's pretty rare for anyone to come visit. She explains that the gang he had just fought has been causing a lot of problems, and the town's public safety has become non-existent. She admits to not being from this town either, and introduces herself as Kodoha Tachibana. Haruka can't understand why she's being so nice, since most people would be afraid of him, especially after he just beat up five guys. Haruka begrudgingly eats her food when she asks him to, but he's shocked by how amazing it is. He wonders if a restaurant does take off, but she corrects him as the dummy is trying to say, take out. Tachibana points out that his eye and hair colors are all out of whack and he wonders if she has a problem with it. She is more amazed than anything but the paranoid Haruka thinks she wants to brawl. Haruka is surprised because normally people are grossed out by his appearance, and they demand that he dye his hair. Haruka explains that looks don't matter in a fight and that is why he came to Furin. Furin is known for having students with the worst grades but they are also the best fighters. They are the people that slip through the cracks at other schools and end up at Furin. Furin fractions brawl every day to decide who is on top, their dedication to fighting so strong that they even fight on holidays and Haruka determined to become the top dog. Tachibana points out that this is aiming pretty high, but Haruka reveals that the reality is he is just as dumb as a brick and fighting is all he knows. To him though, nothing sounds better than fighting to be number one and this place is perfect for him. It soon becomes clear to Tachibana while he's in uniform already when school doesn't even start until tomorrow, it's because he's excited. The embarrassed Haruka explains that he just moved so he didn't have anything else to wear, but she just teases him more. Our protagonist Haruka resorts still fighting as always, and demands that they take this argument outside. Just then, when Itachi Bana is orderly customers almost forgets his to-go bag but Haruka reminds him. As Haruka heads home, he thinks about how strange that entire interaction was. The old man gave him some candies and told Tachibana to thank him. Haruka isn't used to so much praise, so he calls the entire town weird, including Tachibana. He points out that he's wearing the uniform of a school of delinquents, and his appearance is really strange as well. It doesn't make sense for people to be thanking him. Normal people would be on their guard around him and wouldn't trust him. Haruka once picked up someone's wallet and they accused him of stealing it. Just then Tachibana explains that Haruka made the right choice by coming to Furin, but unfortunately there's no possible way he will become the top dog. Shockingly, she states that he might not even be anyone there, let alone be top dog. Haruka points out that she has no clue how strong he is. She acknowledges that he might have strong muscles, but explains that he still won't be able to become top dog. The problem that he has is that he is all alone. Haruka becomes furious and declares that he's not so weak that he needs to rely on anyone else to win. As he leaves, 
Tachibana clarifies that she isn't talking about physical strength. She recommends that he could meet some Purin kids, since then he will understand. Nearby, a group of hoodlums wreak havoc and some poor lady calls someone for help. Haruka runs into the guys from earlier and the leader surprised that he came. He calls our boy if you're in trash but Haruka just tries to ignore him. The leader points out that he didn't forget his face and mock Haruka for his appearance. This guy is shocked though, when he realizes that this is Haruka's real hair and eye color. They thought that he was just doing some terrible cosplay, but he points out that it being real is even more disgusting. Haruka smiles as this is what a normal reaction to his appearance is supposed to be like. This is the disgust that he has gotten used to, but it's okay because he has given up on that end. Haruka still wants to feel like he has value though. If he can be whoever is in front of him, then he can feel like he's better than them. The problem is that Haruka can't stop thinking about how Tachibana told him that he won't be top dog because he is alone. The leader declares that his gang will start a war against Furin for Hakura punching him, but Haruka isn't even listening. He's still focused on Tachibana's words as he punches the leader again and he declares that he isn't the one avoiding people. Haruka lets out his true feelings about his appearance, it doesn't make sense how people act. He knows better than anyone that he looks weird, but he never did anything to the people that insult him, this is just who he is. Haruka starts beating down on this huge group of thugs. In his mind, as long as he is the strongest and the best fighter, he will be top dog, being alone has nothing to do with it. The gang tries to attack him all at once, but it's no use as Haruka far more skilled than them. Haruka instantly takes on any opponent that comes near him and the fur is somehow heavily one-sided even though Haruka is outnumbered. Just then one of the thugs takes Tachibana hostage, but he pays dearly for this very stupid move as Haruka instantly knocks him out. Tachibana thanks him, but Haruka once again explains that the thugs just pissed him off. They tried to use a knife so he tells the idiots to keep the fight clean. One guy tries to sneak up on him, but he just ends up learning a valuable lesson. Haruka fights off even more of them, but he is hindered by having to stay in one place to defend Tachibana. He wonders why he's defending her in the first place and reminds himself that helping others never ends well. Still, Haruka continues to defend her, but eventually one of the thugs uses the knife to cut his leg. Haruka is in a really bad spot now and thinks about how this is why he doesn't defend people. He once again questions why he decided to help her and prepares to take a bat right to his skull. Just then someone stops the attack and Haruka notices that this stranger is wearing a Furin uniform. This guy surprisingly stopped the bat with his back and he tells Tachibana not to tell a certain person that she was in danger. This guy wipes out the bat wielder and tells the punks that they made a real mess in this town. His buddies arrive and the guy furiously tells the gang that they're in big trouble. Backup has arrived, but they're disappointed to see so few opponents as they didn't all need to come to fight. Haruka is in absolute shock, as he can't understand why Furin is saving him. The thugs are terrified to see the one named Toma Hiragi, but they're confident they can win since they outnumber them by a lot. Hiragi tells the others to make quick work of these guys, so they begin to absolutely demolish them. One guy goes to attack Haruka and Haruka gets caught in a terrible spot as his like can't move. Hiragi saves him again and tells Haruka to stand back if he is hurt. Haruka fiercely points out that he is not his boss and explains that the thugs were his to fight. Hiragi just tells him to stop moving around since it makes it harder for them to protect him. Haruka is completely shocked and he looks around to find that the people of the town are cheering on the Furin guys. Haruka can't believe what he is hearing and Tachibana reminds him about how she said that the town's public safety was nearly non-existent. However, this was only true up until two years ago. That all changed and it was all thanks to the students of Furin. The first thing they did was put a notice board at the town's entrance. It states that if someone brings trouble to their town by harming people or property, they will be the ones to purge them no matter who they are. Tachibana explains that somewhere along the line the townspeople gave the Furin students a new name. Because they fight to protect the town, they are known as the town's Bofurin shield called Windbreaker. After the fight, all the townspeople come out to thank the boys. Although they used to be known as low-grade hoodlums, the Furin students are now well respected in the community, however they still do fight quite a bit. They are beloved by everyone, but most importantly they are needed. Haruka is shocked at how different this town is, since the fighters are treated like heroes. They have the appearance of thugs and they even fight all the time, but no one is afraid of them. Haruka is overwhelmed with emotion and he is shocked when the townspeople tell him that he did a great job holding on his own. Some little old lady even offers to treat his wound but Haruka can't take all the kindness and demand that they all stop. Tachibana calmly begins tend to his wound and reminds him that she said that he was alone. 
However, she explains that she could tell right away that he wasn't choosing to be. She can't figure him out completely but she explains that the people of this town need his strength. Haruka can't handle everything that's happening, and he declares that he doesn't need anyone and doesn't get involved. Tachibana is quick to point out though, that his actions say something different. He reminded the old man about his bag, and he also fought hard to protect her. Tachibana points out that he actually hasn't given up on people and he doesn't have to. At the very least, she declares that she won't turn her back on him, so she asks that he turns towards her as well. Tachibana is sure that this will be the way he can become who he wanted. Haruka still has a hard time accepting it all, and he makes a mad dash towards the others. He leaps into the air and points out how the delinquency to be playing hero now. He admits that all this stuff about being the town shield sounds really cool and he absolutely destroys the gang leader that was terrorizing the town. Everyone watches in shock and Haruka wonders if people were really stuck by him there. We then learn that this is the story about how a low-grade pariah who only knows how to fight became the town's hero. That brings the episode to an end. Thanks for watching. Want next part subscribe the channel and turn on notification bell.